Hi all, I am delighted to have Tactics Time 2 for a peek inside session with you. Let's look inside this second edition. So Tim Brennan and Anthea Carson are back. So the best way to improve at chess is to solve tactical puzzles, especially when you haven't reached the lofty heights of 1800 yet. I would agree, I'm actually coaching a few people and I'm emphasizing uh, tactics. And also there's there's certain skills, uh, patterns you get, type different types of mate, for example, uh, tactical liabilities, the signals, the intuition for the tactical signals is also built up in my view from solving uh, tactical exercises, particularly, for example, loose pieces, king safety issues, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so. Tactics you haven't seen before. They assembled uh, thousands of games by everyday players and selected the most instructive tactical examples. So if you want to improve at chess but have limited time and energy available, this is your book. Uh, so for me, yes, uh, solving tactics with students is actually one of my, my favourite ways of, of coaching at the moment. I see it as a way of basically getting to see the, the tactical downsides of the opponent's position. Now let's uh, have a look at each chapter and pick I'm going to pick from the top the middle and the and in general so let's try and solve this so the white queen is on h5 it can't be taken at the moment because of that pin okay so what can we do here I, I believe I know what to do here if I give you um, three seconds you might want to pause the video okay I think you know we can break this pin this is a classic queen takes g1 to unpin the pawn so i think that's a, a very nice example of unpinning let's go back and have a look at this so black to play here ah there's a loose piece here this is what i mean about building up the tactical signals uh if there's a loose piece in the position it, even if this was like in your variations that you're calculating it's always a great pointer to be able to look further and further ahead but there's a loose piece here which kind of implies as an expression loose pieces tend to fall off let's make it fall off the check and i think we can take it here the only thing to con be concerned about is getting the queen trapped but i don't think so i think the queen has plenty of retreat squares well h6 on g3 it's not or e back to e4 okay so that's fine uh let's uh have a look here number six black to play here again a loose piece so getting you know to grips with the tactical signals of disaster i think we can exploit this loose piece with this check and then we're going to be taking on e4 uh, let's go maybe towards the center exercise 30. so they're nicely numbered as well if you if you have a favorite it's nice to, nice to make a note maybe of a certain number of exercise so black to play here ah what's going on here mm, i i think i could be getting this wrong it's not immediate to me a6 b5 maybe with the idea of b4 but there's always knight a4 it looks dangerous like a6 and b5 but you know maybe <laughs> a6 knight d4 b5 there's knight c6 I'm not sure if that's entirely clear okay i think i'm going to be learning something from this <laughs> um i'm going to be learning something from this for sure it seems All right, goes there, not d4. Well, I think this would run into b5 and b4. Surely b5. The forcing moves are very, very important to consider in any uh, chess position. Okay. Uh, let's have a look here. Black to play here. This is interesting, as if the queen is almost trappable maybe it, it has got limited squares i think i've spotted something if i if i give you two seconds to pause the video i think there is something of interest with the queen here because we're also controlling a6 
as I say to some of my students, you, if you want to checkmate the king or the queen, the first thing you do is make sure you take away all the escape squares, and then it's like throwing in the final check after. But here we've got the escape squares covered, so I think we just go here. We're covering a6. OK, bishop f4, good attempt. But the knight is protected by that knight. Can we not just take this on f4? OK, we are not, we're not even giving c7 or up, so I think we, just, we can just take surely. OK. Uh, so let's see now. Uh, let's go further down. Exercise 98. Um, now here, OK, so the Queen's attack there. Queen, look, look at the forcing moves, taking, check. I think we would have Rook D2 with a nasty pin. I think, no, we're not getting back chromated though with Rook C8, so I think we can take here and then play this check. And then play rook d2. I think I'll do that in the game. Yep, that is that is the, the way to go. Uh, let's go on to uh, let's do a uh, hundred here. Now here it looks like the pass pawn is very very dangerous. They're worth their weight in gold. Uh, can we actually afford to do something radical here? I'm just checking. If you want to check, I think it might be the case we could consider taking on e3. I know that looks a bit crazy. D2 though. I'm thinking check. Maybe King H8. Uh, there is there is an annoying check which which scares me a bit about this, uh, as if it might not be uh, plausible. On the other hand, I think it's a winning attempt. I think I will try this. Okay, D2. Now, okay, it doesn't check on the check, but I think I suspect uh, the checks are going to run out. So uh, let's go back. Let's go on to another chapter. So chapter list, uh, chapter two, and dig in at the start maybe. Okay, here I think there's no immediate check against our king, and it looks as though the G file is really dangerous with the exchange up, which always helps. Black has got a lot of pawns though, two pawns for the exchange. I'm wondering just to take here myself, and then can we checkmate here? Okay, great stuff. All right, uh, this one. White play here. Ooh. Now it looks as though, okay, we've got uh, a loose piece there. That's an important tactical signal. I wonder if we can take here a knight c7 check. Uh, this looks very straightforward to do that rather than knight c7 check. I think I'd rather take on g5 first. I might be wrong about this. Okay, now knight c7 check. Okay, I think that, that does it. Forks the black king and rook. Uh, let's uh, dip in the center around the center. Okay, now here, black to play. We've got a nice pin on G2, which to me is a very <clears throat> when you have pins pieces as well, trappable, slightly loose. They, they're all tactical signals. So we've got a pinned pawn, which means actually knight takes f3 is interesting. King h1, and I believe if you want to see it, <laughs> I think I'll let you find a move here. Okay, I hope you spotted. Knight g3 is a nice juicy checkmate with the two knights. Okay, so really nice aesthetic uh, uh, puzzles from, from real games here. Uh, black to play here. So we've got our knight attacked. I wonder, <clears throat> this is, seems to be about winning material. I wonder, our rook is loose. I think we can solve this issue. Uh, I think I would play rook takes c3. Because we're hitting the queen, there's no time to e takes, and if queen takes, we rescue the knight, and I think we'll be material up there. So rook takes c3. Yep, I think that's the way. Uh, captures the white bishop from that kind of X-ray from the queen. Um, another tactical signal, by the way, is alignment in its own right. Uh, that's one I've picked up myself recently to add when, when I when I teach people that tactics. Just alignment in its own right. So when you have that, sometimes that helps uh, the tactics go in, in your favor. Let's see, black to play here. Ah, oh, this is interesting. Oh, I think there's a very important forcing move to prioritize. It's always, it's very important to prioritize in sharp positions the very forcing moves, which are often the checks. And I think here there is a way with a powerful forcing move. 
I believe rook h1 for taking on e1 looks very, very tempting to me. Uh, what do I take with the queen or the rook? Let's have some accuracy rather than guessing. In fact, if we took the rook, there's king d2. I nearly, I nearly blundered there. Queen takes e1 is checkmate. Let's finish the game. If this is one of those tournaments with uh, win as many games as possible, it's important to be incisive. I find that a challenge myself. Should I be, uh, when you're in the faster time controls, how incisive can you afford to be? And even in longer time controls, you want to like manage your time, but uh, you know, not to leave yourself with too sh too little time later on. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this one, black to play here. Uh, it looks as though this check is very useful because uh, uh, there might be an idea of knight d3 and bishop takes g1. I think I'd start with the check. Now, is there anything better than knight d3 here? You know what? There might be a much more incisive way to do this because our knight is covering uh, some escape squares here on d3 and um, d1. So I, I'm wondering if we can celebrate that. Uh, yeah, I think there might be another way of doing this. We can take away escape squares. We just need to take away c1. If we play check, can we take away the c1 escape square? And wouldn't this be check mating? Yes, yes, taking away all the escape squares there. Okay, let's have a look at this. 199. Uh, it looks as though the king is precariously placed. I'm wondering g5. That looks very, very juicy. g5 looks as though it could be checkmate because we've already taken away quite a few escape squares. And I, I say to my students, you know, when you when you've got uh, you know escape squares covered, cherish those pieces. Don't you know? Just use something else for the final killer check. And here we're throwing in g5 for that final killer check. So the rook's doing a great job. The bishop's doing a great job. We just need a final killer check. Okay, uh, so here exercise two hundred. Um, oh, I think this is a classic mate pattern, isn't it? Or is it Bishop H seven, Bishop G six, Bishop F seven looks to be winning the queen. Um, not sure there's too much of a backfire here if we played Bishop H seven, King H eight. It looks pretty forcing. This this mechanism I've used myself in. In games, bishop g6, bishop f7. That would force queen f7, knight takes. Uh, we could factor in the opponent's checks. It doesn't seem that bad to play this. Bishop h7. So I would say I don't think we can try and mate the king because it's going to run to e7 if we played check, queen h7, check, king e7. I can't see it there, but I can see that this seems a clear outcome, uh, so to speak. Oh! <laughs> I've got that wrong. I've missed the mate in one, haven't I? <laughs> I've missed the mate in one. I was going for the queen. There's a mate in one here. Yeah, I've just realised. Queen f6, chat mate. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Bunny ears go up. Okay, I missed the mate in one. Okay. Okay, on to, uh, so yeah, incisiveness, incisiveness. This is what this gives. Don't just go with the, the casual. Chapter three. So, all right. I I have I in one of my prepared tango lines. There's a there's an odd looking queen f6 with the idea of a trap. Bishop g5 for this knight takes in one of my tango lines. Uh, so that's a quite a nice thing to have. Knight takes f3. All right. So here. Uh, if we play rook b8, queen takes c6 check. Can we trap the queen? Is there any other forcing moves to consider here? I think there is. I've spotted it. If you want two seconds or three seconds to pause the video. Black to play here. Okay, I think knight a5 is a good one. Okay, that traps the queen. No escape for the queen. Uh, let's go to the center, around the center. 250, that sounds good. Oh, okay, our knight's pin, otherwise knight g3 would be lucrative. I'm wondering, hang on, hang on, there's a there's a common square. There's another thing to look out for, for peace cooperation, where the common squares are. They're a bit like, you know, the intersections in in um, 
in set theory the intersection squares the common squares I believe Queen H2 is is checkmate uh, so let's look a bit more solve this one whoa okay I think we can use a nice discovered check here Rook H2 but what about King G1 hang on is there better given King G1 oh, I think we can checkmate because we're controlling an escape square here what about Rook G2 Rook G2 isn't that gonna be after Bishop E2 isn't it checkmate here not taking the pawns then King takes but if we if we do this or D1 I think both of them are fine okay and it gives the various uh, variations yeah it mentioned that so yeah uh, Bishop E2 there's also this okay and okay uh, Rook G2 there okay all right let's go towards the end of this get a fill uh, uh, round about here say okay uh, white play here oh I don't like being pinned though ah uh, can we do something about that pinned uh, rook I think we can this check looks very good looking at the forcing moves I think we can solve a lot of problems quite often in chess positions I don't know if you remember on the King's Cross channel I was raving about docking computer as if you know uh, you 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 put on your virtual docking computer uh, during game not cheating with an engine I mean I mean looking at all the forcing moves as if from from the game elite where there was a docking computer right? it's like there, there should be when you look at forcing moves you, you're like transitioning uh, you know from one position to another by force here there's a very important forcing move uh, can you spot it okay I think Bishop takes c3 because there's potentially like this loose rook liability to, to tap into with the King still in the center I think we just tap into that loose rook all right let's let's have a look at another chapter this is all great fun so uh, chapter list let's go have a look at chapter four all right so here black to play here Ah, oh, king in the center exploiting the king in the center very important theme I think we can just pin that queen this looks very very tempting unless there's any objection from you guys I think I'm gonna gonna take here I can't see there's too much of a defense to this move okay let's have a look at this one all right I think black's being very very cheeky here trying to exploit the relative pin that it is you know the relative pins that they can move the pin piece do we really want to take that what devious thing would the opponent have plotted here against us we can't trust the opponent to just offer the Queen hold on a sec there's a common square here Bishop and Knight F2, hold on that's checkmate I think we need to sort out this this big threat here I think Knight takes e4 knowing what the opponent is threatening factoring that in uh, that was for me actually a revelation when I was coaching and to say you know try and see what the opponent's threatening and I realized um, really that's that's a great insight but you don't want people to to just defend against the opponent's threats you don't want them to play passively I think you just want to still encourage uh, you know your own plans but just be aware of the opponent's threats but that was definitely an, a case where it was very important to be aware of the opponent's threat so okay so uh, black to play here let's see this is very very interesting so if we take on f3 we're kind of weakening our own light squares I wonder I is this is this straightforward I'm not sure now I'm really not sure e4 that, that just loses a pawn oh wait 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 does it does it uh, when we move pawns we can't sometimes open up lines I think we've opened the diagonal against the rook which is a loose piece e4 knight takes surely we play queen takes I think I'm going to go for e4 I was thinking initially just about the e5 square but in fact yeah the queen here I think e4 is pretty tempting okay yep that loose piece to factor in the tactical signals here are being really exercised by by these uh, puzzles uh, as well as this you know fundamental question that I like asking uh, when I'm playing chess nowadays you know what are the tactical downsides of the opponent's position I think tactics play a great role in in reinforcing that 
that principle. Now here, you know, if we played rook h8, I'm spotting white could play bishop h7 check. Is it as easy as rook h8 or is there something stronger? That's fascinating. Maybe that pin is pretty awkward and it's worth doing it anyway. I'm not entirely sure. Ah, oh, hang on, hang on. We would have queen e6. Hmm. Queen e6. Whoa. Rook h8, bishop h7, queen e6, queen g7. <laughs> is is it is it uh is this straightforward or is, is this a trick is this a trick um not sure not sure now not sure so okay i i'm probably going to get this wrong uh i can't see we're we're kind of the exchange up for a couple of pawns okay i'm not totally convinced uh I'll I'll go with this. I'll go with this. Oh it's it's not ah uh, on this occasion we're not we're not testing bishop h7 check. That's interesting. I think after queen e6 it, it looks pretty dangerous for white that horrible pin. Um Okay, that's an interesting one to sort of uh uh further check out. Okay, or analyze. Uh so let's see uh exercise 399 white play here oh it looks as though the dark squares are pretty sensitive and we're controlling the escape squares here of the king so we just need a check on top of that cherishing this piece let's not bother moving this rook i think we can go for a checkmate if i give you two seconds to pause the video what would you play here forget material we just mate ends the game uh so uh, a nice idea here to try and checkmate i think is queen f6 because we're threatening Queen G7, that looks desperate. I think we just take. I mean, we just clear this stuff off the board. It's just desperate stuff. This is what computers do to stave off checkmate. We're going to go and checkmate there on G7. Okay, let's look at 400 for the record. Oh, I think this is a nice discovered attack. Unless we can checkmate, I don't see immediately how we can checkmate because d6 is covered. So I'd, I think I'd rather cleanly go for the queen. I think that leaves us material up here if we just take here. Can we not just take the queen? Leaves Leaving us material up. Discovered check. The power of the discovered check. Let's go on to another chapter. This is all good fun. So lots and lots of uh, nice little tactical exercises. Uh, which for me, as I say, in one of my leagues, just by asking the question, you know, what are the tactical downsides of my opponent's position, I found my enjoyment of chess really went up through the roof, and I found lots of interesting tactics. Uh, so I think here we can create a pinned piece or pawn, and that is a great pointer when you're calculating, when you have these tactical signals for, for something up. So we're actually going to create our own tactical signal here and celebrate the pin I think queen takes g6, celebrating that pin, and we can checkmate now in two ways at least, or three, <laughs> two or three. Okay. Uh, let's see, let's go on to another chapter now. Chapter list, chapter six, dip in. Ah, oh, I think, okay, we seem to be winning this position uh, in any case, we're taking, but maybe. Uh, if we're incisive about chat making the opponent as quickly as possible, perhaps rook a1, and then it takes that's like fast chat making. I assume our pawns are going up the board. <laughs> okay, they are. Uh, not not queen c3. I think let's let's use the common square, which is protected, and that's a chat mate there. Okay, this one. Black to play here. Oh, loose piece on b2. That's the tactical signal, I think, being practiced by this position, this b2. And we can use our, our forcing move analysis, prioritize the forcing moves here. Can you spot something based on b2 if I give you three seconds to pause the video? I think I've spotted something based on b2. I don't think there's too much else to think about here. Knight takes d4. And we can go check, and then we can take that rook. So spotting the tactical signals, 
prioritizing uh, forcing moves we've leveled up here the beauty of chess is it can be whatever you want it to be yes it transcends language ace uh, age race religion politics gender and socio-economic backgrounds whatever your circumstances anyone can enjoy a good fight to the death over the chessboard simon williams harry the h pawn simon williams we share i think form pawns because a form pawn is often an h pawn <laughs> at the moment uh so okay and he's a great attacking player of course uh we played a few times on acc <laughs> so uh black to play here oh there's a pins uh pawn here i think we can celebrate that pin the power of the pin piece or pawn is illusionary nimzovich says so i wonder if you can spot it if i give you three seconds what would you play here okay i think the downside of white is evident with that pin pawn the tactical downside okay let's have a look in the middle here black to uh, white to play here we've got a battery going on b7 forget taking material when we can chat mate bang chat mate okay uh round about here let's have a look at this black to play we've got a dangerous pawn we're pawn down that's a downer isn't it but can we play a3 how is white uh getting to stop this pawn say rook d5 a2 rook a5 sure but on a3 helm rook d5 rook d8 takes takes uh king c2 so maybe we need to use the tarash rule to get behind the pawn so i would say maybe a3 rook d5 rook a8 now if king c2 the king's not in time a2 with queen i'll i'll go with a3 and rook a8 myself interesting end game test interesting because the king's cut off can't rescue immediately so i'll say a3 All right, i believe rook d5 rook a8 myself yeah if white tries to stop the pawn and then king c2 a2 okay that tarash rule is very important in rook and pawn endings so you know he said you know you should get your rook behind uh, ideally the opponent's pawns to stop them tarash rule now here uh, i think uh, there's a, a weight of responsibility evident here it's a sort of semi loose piece it's only protected by the queen and i think we can make this rook a loose piece myself so i would say even you know the analysis of semi loose pieces is a great tactical signal to sniff in in positions and i'm wondering if you can spot it if i give you two two or three seconds to pause the video okay i think bishop d5 because i think c takes queen takes d4 is possible i think this is a nice interruption tactic All right so why giving up the exchange there yeah i think that's that's good interference tactic uh okay let's do 600. white play here oh i think we can go for these pawns there was a nakamura game i seem to remember where he won an end game with something like this chasing pawns like this i think this might be enough to to win this end game uh, if basic we just take so i think bishop c8 there's no easy way of defending these pawns surely bishop c8 ah hold on a sec hold on i've just noticed something else i i, I took my my piece my finger off uh, the piece there <laughs> that's allowed in, in online chess but actually i think i would just notice something else about the awkwardness of the bishop if we're being truly incisive although bishop c8 is tempting i think there's another move here i've just noticed maybe g4 is the point to win the bishop g4 looks pretty clear cut actually i'm gonna go for g4 instead <laughs> changing my mind we can still have bishop c8 we can have our cake and eat it there i believe uh so let's go on to another chapter this is all uh, a paradise of fun here uh okay 601 oh i think there's a pinned pawn here this is the tactical signal to pick up on I think we can celebrate that black to play if I give you three seconds celebrating the tactical signal there's also a bit of alignment going on bishop against the king diagonal of death when the f pawn moves what I call the diagonal of death so I'm thinking rook takes e5 because if rook takes we've got queen takes e5 so that's yeah a lot of games are won <clears throat> with that diagonal of death 
black to play here uh forcing move check looks good oh this looks as though the knight's taking out a key escape square i'm thinking check and queen h1 looks pretty tempting indeed okay let's go towards the center and out here white to play oh, i think this is a loose piece i think we can pick up on that with rook takes f8 check looking at the forcing moves <laughs> bunny ears go up in fact this is truly bunny territory because instead of mating i think i've just given back the queen i've just given back the queen the bunny ears go on for a few seconds if i take here there's knight f4 check <laughs> I was too tempted with winning queen. Knight f4 check wins. Ah, <laughs> oh, they put some uh, tempting, tempting things in here. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. Cancel, cancel. All right, uh, I'm going to trade on this. So actually, yes. Yeah, sure. Or even, even queen e8 is checkmate. There are two ways of mating. <laughs> There are two ways of mating. Oh, okay. Okay. There's always room to improve one's clinicality, it seems, in chess. Uh, especially when distracted with winning material. So white to play here. What about queen takes and bishop takes? I know that's a lure for winning material. But on this occasion, I don't think there's a way to checkmate. I think I'm just going to go for the material on this occasion. Okay. Okay, white play here. I think rook g3, if queen h6, queen g6. I think rook g3, we get a good coordination with the rook and queen. And now instead of queen g4 holding, there might be something more incisive. Why mate in two when you can mate in one? So I think queen g4 for queen g6 or queen h3, more incisive. Okay, good fun. Be incisive. Take the time. Find the ultimate downsides, if ideally, of the opponent's position, the ultimate tactical downsides. Uh, so black to play here. Well, if that was a weakness of the last move, it's neglected A3. If white just played B3, then the, the weakness of the last move theory, which I mentioned quite a bit, I think we can just take on A3 here. That's the problem with B3. We can a3 can we not just win the exchange cool let's have a look here and now we've got a very dangerous pass pawn if only we could unblockade this pawn maybe knight c5 to b7 that looks pretty tempting knight c5 knight b7 we're gonna win uh, the exchange at least surely okay excellent uh let's have a look towards the end of this one uh one of these so white play here uh, can we not pin the queen with bishop b5 that looks very much fun to pin the queen rather than taking the bishop yes now hold on a sec there's nothing stronger than taking there surely actually uh, i'm thinking knight e5 because if taking them we we checkmate maybe knight e5 is more clinical than, than taking the queen knight e5 I'm not I'm not sure I'm not sure I mean this this looks really good as well they both look really good okay this is probably wrong but 95 oh, it's an alternative All right just take the queen okay it's fine okay let's have a look towards that's number 800 oh this this kind of rings a bell with me hang on no there's an interruption uh, so instead of taking on d4 the queen isn't connected with f2 here we've got a common square well, I, I say to some of my students look for the common squares to, to see where the pieces cooperate basically that's a deadly common square f2 in fact the f2 square is a great cause of games you know being won for black i've noticed that there's quite a few games of nakamura he's like tapping into the weakness of f2 in particular so black to play here. Oh, we've got a load of uh, pieces here. Can we win the queen with rook c1? Just to rub salt into the wound. Okay. 
and this one. All right, so can we not just play bishop takes d2? That looks pretty strong because we're hitting the queen. Discovered attack on the queen. Let's have a look in uh, the middle of this. Uh, okay, oh, I think I see a powerful forcing move idea. Can you spot it? I'll give you two seconds or three seconds to pause the video. I think there's a powerful forcing move here. Rook takes c4 for knight d6 check. That looks pretty juicy to me. Okay, uh, let's go towards the end. 900 sounds impressive. Now, if we play check, the king's escaping. What if we try and cut the escape squares? We can do it with a check. Knight takes d7, cutting that key escape square for this to be checkmate. Two ingredients of checkmating. So the arts and skills of checkmating being tested here. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, chapter list again. Have one. Or, have a look at one or two here. White's play here. Well, we've got a pins pawn there. I, I think maybe Rook takes f6, and we can look forward to doubling pigs on the seventh, as they say. Uh, we can put both rooks on the seventh after. So Rook takes f6 looks good to me. All right, the e7 pawn is pinned. Yes, it's highlighting the tactical signals uh, for your for your own games. Uh, so um, white play here. Uh, it looks as though the king is precariously placed. Actually, in fact, doesn't isn't rook d4 kind of awkward for black? It looks like checkmate. Okay. Uh, let's see this one. Black to play all pins pawn. Okay, I think we can celebrate that fact. I hope you spotted it. The power of the pin pawn or piece is illusionary. I think there's no major checks to our king. I think we can get away with this. Okay. And like 1001 Dalmatians, let's have a look at the, the 1001 one. Okay. Uh, so white to play here. Oh, I think, I think we can do something naughty here. Three seconds. Okay, I think we can fork queen and bishop. And I think we can safely take here. Okay, excellent. Great fun. Sharpen your tactics. I think these really, you know, practice the art of finding the tactical downsides of the opponent's position, which is a key skill in chess, especially if you're, you know, less than 2,000. I think it's an absolute key skill. And to sort of tune yourself on the tactical signals as well. Uh, so I'll go back to the course introduction page. Very affordable course here. Uh, buy it as a gift as well for other people. Uh, so yeah, great fun. You can also practice this course with the cyclical review feature of Chessable. Cyclical. <laughs> cyclical. Uh, and so it comes with great recommendations from very, very strong uh, players uh, here. Uh, Grandmaster Alex Fishbein. Uh, these uh, problems are not contrived. They're they are the types of tactics likely to occur in a real game. I think that's the key philosophy of tactics time that you know they're from real games. So Tim Brennan and Fiat Carlson made sure to include diverse positions. You'll find opening checkmates and pawn end games. That's great, isn't it? Okay, I hope you enjoyed my little review and maybe some also some insights into tactics generally as well. Thrown in. <laughs> okay. It's, this looks like a great one to improve your tactics and results. Uh, so highly, I'll, I would highly uh, be uh, checking this out. Interested in checking this out. Okay, uh, have a look at the uh, the link there uh, to go to this course. So there's a Bitly link there, or it's in the description um, and the pinned comment of this video. Thanks very much.